You probably clicked on this video to listen to me talk about the Garfield movie, but you were fooled! I'm gonna talk about my Oni Girl for a few minutes beforehand, and chances are I'll talk about it longer since there is not a lot to say about Garfield, but I'm getting ahead of myself. My Oni Girl is the recent Netflix anime film by Studio Colorido, a studio that I've been following for quite some time now. Drifting Home is my favorite of theirs, Penguin Highway is great, and A Whisker Away is a movie I've gone back and forth on a couple of times, definitely my worst review, but I still like it. Each of these movies follows a similar premise of taking a grounded, everyday protagonist and thrusting them into a fantastical situation where they approach said situation with a determined and almost welcoming mindset. My Oni Girl continues this pattern with its protagonist getting wrapped up in a magical ordeal when he stumbles upon a girl who turns out to be an Oni who, I assume in Japanese fiction, vary from demons to orcs to sometimes even just regular people with horns. And the two go on a journey to a shrine to find her mother, all while the boy learns some life lessons about not being shy and all that. I notoriously have never been a fan of stories where a manic pixie dream girl inspires a loner boy to become outgoing. Not all of them, but it gets pretty exhausting when it feels like the boy doesn't do anything before this random girl comes into his life to solve all his problems and then stays for no reason. However, I've appreciated movies that evolved this concept into something more, and My Oni Girl kind of follows suit. Hiragi himself is a charming protagonist who is earnest and well-meaning, but he is also sort of a yes-man. He goes through this arc of speaking for himself and not hiding his feelings that is admirable and sweet, and I especially liked at one point he didn't speak up because he was inspired by Tsumugi or anything, it was because Tsumugi was hurt and he wanted to do everything he could to make sure his friend was okay. And it probably helped that the Oni mythology is heavily tied to secrets and feelings to tie the arc to the story. Tsumugi is also charming, not just because she's more of a brat than your typical dream girl, but also because she actually has a character arc. Yeah, there's this whole thing about her bottling up her pent-up frustrations towards her mother and being the catalyst for change in her village, and it's kind of cool. However, while Pancreas is my go-to punching bag for this kind of story, aside from my dress-up darling, it would be hard for me to say if this was better. I was really digging the dynamic between the two in this movie to the point where it was greatly disappointing to see them fall out due to issues of miscommunication and selfishness. And due to the mythology, that is now a plot point, so it has to stay that way. It also doesn't help that these two and their baggage have to carry the whole movie. And then we get to the second half and the two are pretty much separated for most of it, which really sucks. But as someone who is exhausted with these Your Name-esque rescue the love interest plot beats, I did appreciate that this time the guy was spirited away and not the girl. It is also a beautiful film as expected, and I do like the action scenes with the snow demons. My Oni Girl is simply a cute film about saying what you really mean, and it executes the message pretty well, but because of its fractured character dynamic and its honestly disjointed final act, I can't say it really excels at what it wants to do. It is my least favorite of Colorado's, but I'm still looking forward to what they're going to do next in two years. Six out of ten. Now for the movie you're actually here for, I think I have a lot less to say about Garfield. And that's because of two things. It doesn't feel like Garfield, and it doesn't even feel like a movie. I grew up on a lot of the Garfield comics, so I was genuinely thrown off when the movie turned out to be full of completely original characters, not from the Garfield series, except for the main three, Garfield, Odie, and John. And even then, they don't feel like their usual selves. John is out for most of the film, Odie is charming, but you forget he's even there most of the time, and Garfield is a passable interpretation, but he does feel different. Never mind the weird Chris Pratt casting, Garfield feels more brash and snarky than sarcastic and apathetic like he was in the comics. His whole conflict with his long-lost father feels cute and decently resolved, but there is just nothing special about it because it's played completely straight. There's also this bull character who doesn't do a whole lot and the villains are laughably pathetic. It just 
feels like a typical generic kids movie you'd find on Netflix and not a theatrical Garfield movie. And it's not just the character work and the vibe, the story itself feels clustered. Like there is barely a first act, it just jumps into the story and goes beat by beat through various locations and dialogue scenes that feel ripped from other better movies. And not just the story, there are things about the filmmaking too that are way off. There are some shots that are very pretty, and I do like the cartoony physical hijinks, but I constantly felt like this was meant for streaming rather than theaters, with how distractingly clean everything looked and how stiff the character animation was at times. This is kind of on par with Orion and the Dark's animation, which isn't bad, but there's a reason why it went straight to Netflix. Also, the soundtrack is horribly unmemorable. This was actually the closest I have ever come to sleeping in the movie theater. It really says a lot about how dull and uninteresting this movie is that my mind was wandering off to other things, like replaying scenes of Liz and the Bluebird in my head, or thinking about the quintessential quintuplets movie, which I watched on the same day. Also, a quick review of quintuplets. The movie is great, even though the series is just kind of okay. Also, I have recently re-entered my DDLC hyperfixation, these voiced sprite animations from Quirksees are some of the best stuff I have ever seen. I've been binging every single one of Alpha Rad's Monkey Monday VODs, they're really funny. I just rewatched Princess Principle, and I think I'm gonna bump this show up from a 9 to a 10, even if the movies haven't lived up to the quality yet. Uh, I watched Princess Protection Program, it is absolute crap, and oh yeah, am I supposed to talk about the Garfield movie? It also confuses me why they didn't go with the other, more obvious route with this movie. Garfield and John have a hilariously miserable dynamic in the comics where Garfield just keeps ruining John's life, and one of the ways he does it is by ruining his dates on occasion. So what if the movie was about Garfield doing that out of jealousy and insecurities born from his strained familial relationship with John? That could be interesting, but I have already put more thought into Garfield than the movie has. At the end of the day, it is just not very interesting and a very boring slog, but it is a passably watchable film with decent production values and like two, maybe three good scenes. Four out of 10. It's been a while since I recommended things that weren't current year releases and not Liz and the Bluebird, so if you want to watch something similar to My Oni Girl, Hello World is pretty great, even though it is really hard to find. If you have a VPN, it's on Netflix somewhere in the world. If you want to watch something similar to Garfield, and better, you should give the Peanuts movie a watch if you haven't already. And if you already have, why not watch it again? And finally, a random recommendation, watch Tomiko Market. It is an absolute blast to watch. And that's Garfield and My Oni Girl. Let me know your thoughts on these movies. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell. Thank you for watching, and catch you next time. Hey!